You're welcome at this session, Medical Sciences by Naftali Muhumza. Where we want to start studies of pharmacodynamics. If you haven't watched, we have finished pharmacokinetics, where we said pharmacokinetics is the study of ADMI, that is drug ad absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So in this session, we want to start looking at pharmacodynamics. So pharmacodynamics is also another introduction part of pharmacology, which deals with what the drug does to the body. We saw pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug, but here it is what the drug does to the body. So you want to see what the drug does to the body. So this is, this. we shall look at, it is the study of effects of the drug. We shall study the effects of the drug to the body. So it is the study of effects of the drug. That is biochemical, it can be biochemical effects, can be biochemical or physiological effects. Then after looking at these effects, we also look at the mechanism of action, the mechanism of action of drugs and their adverse effects. And their adverse effects on the body. So this is the definition for pharmacodynamics, which we are going to deal with the biochemical or physiological effects of the drug on the body, their mechanism of action, then plus the adverse effects. So we are looking at the physiological biochemical responses, the mechanism of action, and adverse reactions. What the drug does to the body. And after looking at that, we are going to see different principles under which these drugs act or what we call the types of action. And some drugs act by stimulation, others act by depletion, others act by, by replacement or substitution, others act by irritation, and lastly by cytotoxic, cytotoxicity. So these are the five ways how drugs act in the body. Either they act by stimulating cells in the body, drugs like epinephrine, that when it binds to the beta receptors, it stimulates or it increases the activity, increases the activity of the cells where they bind. Example is epinephrine which stimulates, and other drugs act by, by reducing the action of the cell, the reducing the activity of the cell. And those drugs include barbiturates, Barbiturates like phenyntoin and phenobarbital, that when they bind on the receptors, they deplace the activity of the cell. These ones, we give them to convalescent patients to stop scissors. Then the other drugs act by replacement, whereby that when given this drug, it replaces the natural active metabolite. For example, iron, in the state, we normally give it to replace the, to, to, give, to treat people with iron deficiency, to replace the natural iron. So these are some of the drugs we can use as a replacement or as a substitute. We see in the deficiency of vitamins, we can give synthetic vitamins. So if the body lacks some nutrients, 
We can always replace them by giving drugs. So that is action by replacement, and others act by irritation, or by these are noxious edge. They cause noxious effects on, on uh, primitive cells like connective tissues and epithelial cells. They cause the, when given, they cause irritation, and this irritation might be mild or severe. But if it's severe, it can lead to inflammation of that cell and loss of function. And loss of function. So this is action by irritation. Then lastly is action by toxicity, where these drugs, they cause cell death. Cytotoxic drugs, these act on microorganisms. They act on neoplasm cancerous cells, that is neoplasms, like anti-cancer drugs and antibiotics. So antibiotics act by killing these bacterial cells, whereas neoplasms act by destroying cancer cells. That is a cytotoxic effect of the drug. So these are the principles on which a drug acts. After looking at the principles of drug action, we can now discuss the mechanisms. How do they act? act? Mechanisms, these are molecular events that occur within a cell to produce a final effect. And about the mechanism of action of drugs, we shall see that they are categorized into two, that is non-receptor mediated and receptor mediated. And those ones which are non-receptor mediated, we have those ones which act by physical means, physical ways others do by chemical. And among the physical mechanisms, we have those ones which we have those ones which act by adsorption, those ones which act by osmosis, we have those ones which act by chelating. If chelating will come this side, we have radioactivity, and so on. So these are physical ways drugs can either act by adsorbing the toxins in the body. For example, is activated charcoal. Activated charcoal act like activated charcoal is a good example of drugs which can adsorb toxins when given orally. So we can give activated charcoal as way of adsorbing molecules. Then another way is by osmosis, which applies to drugs which are highly osmolar. And these drugs include manito. Manito can be an example of drugs. That when given, it can cause diuresis or it absorbs water to itself. That is manito. And others, we have radioactive substances like iodine 125, which can be a good radioactive agent that when given, it can destroy those cancerous cells. So these are the physical mechanisms of drug action. Whereas chemical, Chemical we have, we have chemical, under chemical we can see use of chelating agents. Use of antacids. Whereby these antacids like magnesium sulfate, an example is magnesium sulfate which neutralizes the acid produced within the stomach by the palliator cells. So magnesium sulfate, we give it to people with peptic ulcers which who have GAD and they are producing a lot of acid. Then chelating agents, we give them to people who have been intoxicated with metals. And an example of a chelating agent, we have 
dimecaprol we have penicillamine penicillamine this one we abbreviate it as bar so bar and penicillamine they are chelating agents that whenever intoxicated with heavy metals they can easily chelate these agents so these are the chemical means then another way of this drug action can be through iron channels another way which is a non receptor mediated can be by enzymes The last layer is also by production of antibodies. And those ones which work through iron channels, they are drugs that work through iron channels, whereby they either cause opening or closing of these iron channels. Then enzymes, for them they include enzymes like angiotensin converting enzyme those are ACEs these enzymes or these drugs like ACE inhibitors they act by increasing the action of angiotensin converting enzyme which is responsible for converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 in other there is also xanthine which also plays a big role. Then the production of antibodies, for example, vaccines like BCG, which is given to prevent tuberculosis. Vaccines like BCG are given and they trigger production of antibodies that fight this disease. So these are non-receptor mediated mechanisms of action of drugs. After looking at non-receptor mediated, now we can dive into receptor-mediated mechanisms of action. But here we are going to introduce, then in the next video, we shall look at them in details. So under receptor-mediated, there are four receptor families. And these ones, they have specific receptors, or they have specific target sites. And when they bind on these receptors, which are found either on the surface or in the membrane on the cytoplasm, they cause amplification of the effect and they include ligand gated ligand gated ion channels they include enzyme or we can they include g protein coupled receptors they include g protein coupled receptors they include enzyme receptors Enzyme receptors like insulin, like insulin receptors. Then lastly, we shall look at intracellular receptors. Intracellular receptors, and these intracellular receptors include intracellular, but many commonly we call them nuclear receptors. We call them nuclear receptors, but they are also sometimes called intracellular receptors. These ligand negated ion channels, we shall see the different drugs which act through this, like the nicotine, nicotine, and nicotine acetylcholine receptor. We shall look at GABA receptors working drugs that work through those receptors. Then g coupled receptor, we shall see that it spans the membrane seven times, and we shall categorize them as in two, three ways. Whereby we have, we shall have G2, G stimulatory, and G inhibitory. And we shall see different mechanisms on how they work. Then enzyme receptors we have given like insulin, which acts by activating tyrosine kinase which we shall look at. Then lastly, these are nuclear receptors, and this one is the command transcription. These ones cause transcription, that is the formation of mRNA, leading to formation of new genes. Lastly, in this video, we can discuss
is about to sell receptor theory. Lastly, we can talk about cell receptor theory. It is not cell, it is a drug receptor theory. theory. That if I have a receptor, this is a receptor, and I bring a drug in this form, this drug should be complementary to the binding site of the receptor. They bind together to form what we call drug receptor complex. Shall form drug receptor complex. And after forming drug receptor complex, we can end up by producing an effect of the drug on that receptor, which is the product. So the product of that drug is the effect. So when the drug binds, if it has intrinsic activity and it has affinity, it binds to this receptor. And when this drug binds to its receptor, so this is the, the receptor and the drug binds to form what you call drug receptor complex and at the long run we produce a pharmacological response on that drug and there are different types of drugs when they bind they produce different responses whereby we have those which produce we have some drugs which are called but before we do look at the different drugs there is some Definition is we need to know about which we call affinity of a drug and intrinsic activity. So the affinity of the drug is the ability of a drug to bind to its receptor, to bind to its receptor well, as intrinsic activity abbreviated as IF is the ability of the drug of the drug to produce maximum pharmacological response pharmacological response when after binding to the receptor because some drugs might bind on the receptor and do not cause pharmacological response. So that is intrinsic. So they can have affinity without intrinsic activity. So if I can draw a graph, I can draw a graph where this one is going to be the response. And this is the, the amount of the dose of the drug. So some drugs can they act as full agonist, whereby here I can I can put a hundred percent. So some drugs can act as full agonist, whereby they attain a hundred percent efficacy. Then some drugs are partial agonist, whereby they produce fifty percent response. Then others are antagonist. That when they bind to receptors, they do not produce any pharmacological response. And there are those ones which are inverse agonists. This one becomes an inverse agonist. This one is an antagonist. Then this is inverse agonist. This one is partial agonist. Then this is full agonist. What is a full agonist? This uh, drug with full agonist, it has 100% affinity and 100% intrinsic activity. This one has 100% affinity plus intrinsic activity. 
That's why it is producing a maximum response. That when it binds on the receptor, it produces maximum response. But which is different from partial agonists, which have 100% affinity, but has 50% intrinsic activity. So it does not produce maximum pharmacological response. Antagonists, these are drugs that they, when they bind on the receptors, they prevent normal, normal drugs or drug, other drugs from binding, or even the normal substances within their body. So antagonists, they, they have 100% affinity, but with zero intrinsic activity. They have 0% intrinsic activity. They have they bind the receptors, but they do not produce any pharmacological response. Then lastly is inverse agonists, whereby inverse agonists for them, they have 100% affinity, but they have negative intrinsic activity. That when they bind on the receptors, they cause opposite reaction. Or they cause the what we call the opposite reaction, whereby they even remove the small which is there. These are inverse agonists. So this is what we can discuss in this introduction to pharmacodynamics, whereby we have looked at the principles, we have looked at the mechanisms of action, which are non-receptor mediated and receptor mediated. Then we have ended up with the drug receptor interaction, whereby you have seen it can bind the receptor from a complex which produces effect, and we have seen different types of these drugs. Some can be full agonist, partial agonist, antagonist, and inverse agonist. Thank you so much for learning until the end. We are always at your service.